Hollywood, the land of lust, lights, and lies. Where the washed-up celebrities are as common as the bright-eyed does wandering into this unforgiving wasteland of steel and concrete. At Staples Center, the Lakers are one of these washed-up celebs. In their heyday, they were a box office giant, a pioneer of the hardwood that created rivalries, memories, and legends for all time. Today, that's all they can cling on to. By God, they're trying their damnedest to do so. After the Kobe era faded into nothing, the Lakers as we knew them were dead. A team long avoiding the pits of despair had bought an apartment in them. Long had they pretended to be relevant after the patriarch Jerry Buss died. His son Jim only shared his name, none of his business acumen. That is, unless you call throwing all of your money at a Kobe Bryant coming off a torn Achilles a good move. Or you consider giving obscene contracts to the likes of Timofey Moshkov and Luol Deng wise decisions. It was a mess. The team was dog shit and the fans were calling for Jim Buss's head. Four straight years in the basement will do that to any former power. Begin the bloody regime change. February 21st, 2017. A day of great change in the Laker organization. The long incompetent Jim Buss was assassinated on his throne of plastic and his sidekick Mitch Kupchak was exiled to the great wastes of NBA past. The new head honcho is his younger sister, Jeannie Buss. She got a hero's welcome from the Laker faithful. This woman, with her logic and reasoning, would bring in great gods of all. Let's cut out the bullshit. They brought in some old names from the Lakers' glory days. You thought Phil Jackson on the Knicks was bad? Try bringing on Magic Johnson. A man who has shown no signs or skills that would indicate success at the executive level. A czar with the keys to a kingdom he has no experience running. At least you can argue his right-hand man would be someone decent, but fuck logic, they brought in Kobe's old agent and Rob Palenka. So now they've handed the keys to a Lamborghini to a bunch of 16-year-old boys who've never driven a car. Yep, this is going to be a total fucking disaster. It ended up taking a while since they just wanted to feel things out, clean up the mess a little bit. They did end up getting rid of that awful Moshgov contract, but they had to dangle D'Angelo Russell for them to take it. It did net them Kyle Kuzma though, small consolation. The Lakers were still out of the playoffs, but they were better. They had promising pieces. Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Julius Randle, Kyle Kuzma. You get a few big guns in there and you've got yourselves a strong team. Magic felt the same way. This offseason was going to shake the NBA so much that it would register as a 9 on the Richter scale. In fact, if they failed, Magic was going to end his career in front of Staples Center. Look at all of the names they could get. Paul George, local product, has dreamed of playing for the Lakers since he was a boy. A perfect fit to go right back to Oklahoma City. PG-13 chose playing second fiddle to a glorified stat pad over going to the Lakers. That should say it all. But doesn't matter, they can get Kawhi Leonard. Disgruntled player demanding a trade, and LA has the pieces to get it done. Unfortunately, Toronto did too. Okay, how about Boogie Cousins? Coming off a major injury, but he should be. He signed with Golden State, are you fucking kidding? How are we supposed to compete with the Warriors now? My apologies, I was a tad premature. Oh boy, you got LeBron. Even though when you look past the surface, Magic and Palinka had nothing to do with the signing. LeBron James has long had desires to move closer to his pet passions in movie making and producing films and to expand his brand in ways Cleveland couldn't. He didn't come to the Lakers for tradition or because of a killer sales pitch, he came for reasons of convenience. As for the cast of characters you will aid him with, John Rondo, Lance Stevenson, Deval McGee, Michael Beasley? You brought back KCP but allowed Julius Randle to leave for the Pelicans? For God's sake, you were supposed to bring in a legit supporting cast, not the Expendables. You're literally putting LeBron in the same situation he left. Wait, it's worse because the fanbase outright hates him before playing a game. They know what LeBron brings. All the rumors, all the overhauling, all of the allegations of meddling in player affairs. It doesn't matter if LeBron is accomplished, LA doesn't give a fuck unless it was done in their city. He's latter stage Kobe without any of the capital that Kobe had built up over the years. Even then, the season had yet to begin. Glad it didn't because they had struggled to gain any sort of traction. Despite sacrificing Luol Deng and his awful contract to the gods, they were never truly dominant, always teetering around 500. LeBron himself was starting to deal with the effects of age. Years of having to single-handedly carry teams to relevance was finally taking its toll on his body. A nagging groin injury took him out for a good chunk of January and Dele slid hard. Around that time, the executives above came to the realization that they needed more names and star power. Perfect for them, they had a unibrow they could grow. Anthony Davis was tired of the Pelicans and their incompetence. He demanded a trade to a real team, a true contender for championship glory. The Lakers were that. They had the pieces to do it. Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, and Ivica Zubats had some value. Future picks. A package could be made of some of these for a reasonable offer, but no Magic and Rob wanted to get it done quickly. You talk about overpayments, the Lakers ended up offering the entire team to New Orleans. And a bevy of future first round picks. And be willing to eat a terrible contract in Solomon Hill. 
It was pure desperation, and only a fool would reject such an offer. Unfortunately, Del Demps was a fool and laughed in their faces. Del sacrificed his career for IRL shipposting. A true hero for us all. LA laid down their hand for all to see, and it failed miserably. However, they had another play to call. Trading their young developing center in Avica Zubac to the Clippers for a career backup big man in Mike Muscala. That's not going to haunt you if Zubac ends up developing. Even worse, the botched unibrow trade had far more unintended consequences. Previous four before that, remember when he was on that ridiculous tear and shot 70% during those four games. He has averaged They too know the rumor. They saw what happened in Cleveland. There were already countless whispers about Luke Walton being a terrible coach who should be fired for one of LeBron's puppets. The rest of the team was absolutely lost at this point. All the trade rumors and let GM allegations would get to anyone's head. If I'm one of those players, here's my thought process. Why do they try to trade me? Do they even want me here? Am I just completely replaceable to these guys? Why should I give a fuck about the Lakers? To that extent it happened, but don't worry, LeBron's gonna bail this team out and get them to the playoffs again. Two years to the day of Magic's hiring, prepare for playoff mode. Here he goes, LBJ drives this set! Well, the Phoenix Warriors. Oh, he's yeah. gonna feel that one. LeBron with five seconds, driving out of trouble. Nope. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. That was some playoff mode, LeBron. Your reward is missing the final games of the season thanks to that nagging groin injury. A season filled with hope and stars aplenty burned into nothing. Another year without playoffs. The fucking Clippers ended up making it in, man. The Clippers! You can't be second fiddle to those fucks, are you kidding? It was total failure all around, especially in the executive branch. Magic and Palenka failed to walk any of their talk over the past year, and blood had to be shed. Luke Walton has pretty much been under the coach to be fired category for roughly a year, so let's just set him free to go to Sacramento, and then be alleged of sexual assault. We all laughed for a moment, but it would get worse for LA. Way worse. Magic Johnson had enough of being whatever he did and resigned from his post to sit around and do nothing. His only legacy will be in the relentless accusations of tampering he did by discussing other teams' stars. Let's get one thing completely clear. Magic Johnson had none of the core skills or character traits to be an executive. He's a man who was more interested in protecting and promoting his own image instead of developing a team. Once again, I don't know where his responsibility started or ended. All I know is that he went on television to throw everyone else under the bus. It was no way his fault, even for the alleged bullying he did to his underlings. You know who blames everyone else for their own demise? Failures. His brief tenure as an exec was more of a disaster than a syndicated talk show. That's something special. In no way am I siding with Rob Palenka in this affair. If Magic's statements are true, he's nothing more than a snake in the grass who only cares about his own well-being. A man who would lie to his mother and stab her in the back to move up in the world. The real answer is probably somewhere in the middle. They are both at fault for the shit show on display. There was no synergy with this crew, just a game plan of get big names and that was it. There was no better example of this than looking for their next head coach. The coaching search crew included a bunch of members of the Bus family, the largely inept Kurt Rambis and his wife. Why is Kurt Rambis even here? What are his qualifications, being a terrible head coach and lingering as a role player on the 80s teams? Perhaps their first candidate in Monty Williams saw this and noped the fuck out of there. He denied the Lakers for the Phoenix Suns. One of the most inept organizations in basketball, a team that has burned through seven head coaches in seven years. They lost out to that. At this point, they threw their hands in the air and settled for LeBron's old puppet in Tyron Lu. I don't know what's more humiliating, that they would settle for him or the fact that he didn't want anything to do with this mess. I don't have an issue with his contract length, but anchoring Jason Kidd to him? The guy that has had controversy follow him everywhere he's went as a coach? Fortunately for the meddlesome owners in charge, they found a coach willing enough to be whipped to their demands. The bad part was that it was Frank Vogel, a coach who had his reputation ruined thanks to a stint with the Magic. And now he has Jason Kidd who will breathe down his neck, along with Rambus and whomever else related to the Lakers they wish to hire. In this time frame, Jeannie Buss can be made a perfect model of female empowerment. She shows that women can be just as incompetent as men are as executives. I honestly don't see a difference between her and her previously maligned brother Jim. From the increasingly meddling nature of her ownership to accidentally CCing Magic Johnson in an email criticizing Magic, 
She'll passively aggressively rip on Clippers owner Steve Ballmer, but he at least has the wherewithal to stay the fuck out of day-to-day -day operations. She surrounds herself with incompetent yes-men in a feigned attempt at creating a family atmosphere. Jeannie has decided on bringing way too many cooks into the kitchen, and only a few of them have gone to culinary school, and those that did flunked out in the first semester. As a result, you get the laughing stock Lakers you see in front of you today. Why the fuck would any free agent want to come here? So they can be under the threat of being traded for another brand name superstar that will hate the Lakers in time? That they can witness the protests of an incredibly entitled fanbase that hasn't seen a shred of hardship in their history? For fuck's sake, I'd rather play for the Kings! They may be a shithole franchise, but there's a lot of exciting youth over there that's intriguing for the future. LA has gone from supposedly developing young players to be their future core to just go back to name chasing. Once again, they're going to go all out on an aggressive blitz for name players that Lakers fans can be hyped about until reality smacks them in the face. It says something when the most sympathetic main character in this story is LeBron. All he wanted to do was be close to Hollywood and star in Space Jam 2. Maybe win another championship ring in the process. In reality, he's stuck on a team that's in the shit or teammates that think he wants them gone and a fan base that doesn't want him there. The Lando Lakers soap opera will continue with probably countless more falling to the sword. From one of the proudest NBA franchises to a sideshow. Somewhere Jim Buss is laughing his ass off with a vat of popcorn in his lap. No, I haven't. I couldn't. I, I couldn't. I couldn't stand and tell her. But the one thing that she had in me, somebody she could trust and loyal to her. And then I will be that as well. I've been talking to people walking here. We've been talking about next year, and I'm sitting there saying, I'm not going to be here. <laughs>